At $500, the Quest 3 is still not nearly the cheapest headset on the market, and that might explain why the Quest 2 outsold it 2 to 1 during the holiday season. But at least if you can finally fork over the $500 for a Quest 3, there is a lot of free things you can do with it. One of which is that Asgard's Wrath 2 game that's normally $60 is still going to be free, and that's continuing through June. Initially, they had said they were going to include a free copy of Asgard's Wrath 2 for anyone who bought a Quest 3, but it was only going to be for the first few months through January. That's been pushed several times now, and it's going all the way till the end of June, making me wonder if this is just going to end up eventually being a free game no matter when you buy a Quest 3. Of course, it's available to buy for the Quest 2 and play on the Quest 2, but it's not free over there, trying to give people that little extra incentive to spend twice the money to get a Quest 3. If you are someone who's gotten the Quest 3, though, remember, you do need to go redeem the game, which means going to the page and hitting the claim button. Otherwise, if you get past that deadline date, you're not going to end up getting the game at all. Continuing the trend we've seen lately, another big title is making it over from App Lab to the official MetaQuest store, and it's a game that's been free all along. Penguin Paradise is launching today on the official store. Staying free, this is a game where you bounce around as a penguin in an Arctic environment. You're playing against each other. There's competitive racing. You're trying to survive. But a new mode that's coming to the game, World Master Mode, is actually going to let people create their own worlds, save them, and then bring their friends in to play them together. On top of that, it's got a bunch of other modes, Battle Royale, Freeze Tag. And like most free games, it does rely on in-game currency, although they do give you some free currency every time you log in. And they actually have a mechanic where you can find find awards chests that are placed around hidden in the world that give you extra in-game currency and cosmetics to make it so you don't ultimately have to spend money in the game. For a long time, it felt like a lot of games were being gatekept, making it from App Lab over to the actual MetaQuest store, and we're starting to see this trend of more and more of the bigger known titles making it over, which is really cool. Thanks to Sava Studios for sponsoring today's news, and another congratulations to them for making it over to the official store. If you need more free entertainment, a game I've been talking about and following for a while has now entered open alpha on SideQuest, meaning you can try it out for Free. Mannequin is an asymmetrical horror game. This is putting five players in 2v3 matches. Two agents are hunting down shape-shifting aliens called mannequins. This game is from Fast Travel Games, which you might recognize from other big games like Project Demigod, Vampire the Masquerade, Justice. For now, it is through SideQuest, so you do have to sideload this, although SideQuest has made that a lot easier. If you're interested, I'll leave a link down below in the comments and description in case you want to get in there and check it out while it's still free. Another game that you might be able to get into free if you're willing to beta test is V-Rider. This Motorcycle Simulator is a multiplayer game that's coming up, and it has me extremely curious about it because you actually take the controllers in each hand and use the motion controls of them to control the bikes in this. This game is not only advertising trying to create a realistic riding simulator, but it's actually set to be the official title of the Superbike World Championship. That means it's bringing actual licensed circuits, official riders, and even official Superbike models. Ducati, Kawasaki, Honda, and more. We don't get enough racing games or driving sims in VR, especially when you're only on the quest, so this this one has me really curious, although now I feel like we need one of those motorcycle simulators we saw at DreamHack last year. Now, if you purchased Escape Simulator flat before on Steam, you could be getting Escape Simulator VR as DLC completely free. Escape Simulator is a first-person puzzler. You can either play solo or online in co-op. It says it's best with two to three players, but playable with more. And now they're saying up to eight-player co-op escape rooms in VR is launching free on April 2nd. If you don't already own the game, the game is actually going to go up on April 14th after this, weirdly, from $15 to $20. There's a whole bunch of different bundles right now, but if it's a title you liked flat, it does have a very positive rating on Steam. Might be something to watch out for for the PC VR crowd. Unfortunately, not everything in the news this week is rainbows and sunshine as a game that I loved back in the day, Virtual Rickality. That, of course, is the Rick and Morty VR title made by the same people that made Job Simulator may actually face delisting as a game. Because Warner Bros. Discovery is changing things, they've been delisting titles published by Adult Swim Games which could include Rick and Morty Virtual Regality. The game feels a lot like Job Simulator with a Rick and Morty skin over it, although it has so many references to Rick and Morty. If you are a fan of the show, you'll probably really enjoy the game, even though the gameplay is kind of simple. But for now, unfortunately, all we know is as Warner Bros. Discovery is delisting most Adult Swim games in the next 60 days, this might get pulled. Upload VR tried to contact Alchemy Labs, the creators of Job Simulator and this game, and the CEO basically said that they don't have insight or control over the decision that Warner Bros. is going to make. They be disappointed if it got removed, especially because it requires little to no maintenance to operate and is beloved by fans and VR enthusiasts. Of course, especially as the game is not a multiplayer game, it doesn't necessarily need server space, which we know is getting more and more expensive as time goes on. This is one of the few games that I actually have a physical copy of for the original PSVR and the collector's edition that came in, so it's making me think I should definitely hang on to that now. We've known for a minute now that Samsung is working on an XR headset, but according to a report from the Daily Korea, we might actually be getting 
getting some leaked specs to it. The headset would use a micro OLED display supplied by Sony, which surprisingly a lot of the displays in VR headsets are supplied by Sony. The displays would be 1.3 inches with a resolution of 3840 by 3552, 90 FPS, and a thousand nits brightness. This is the Samsung headset that is working together with Google and Qualcomm, and this is something that is rumored to be more of a competitor for the Apple Vision Pro than something like a Quest 3. Especially when you compare that to the Quest 3's for current resolution of 2064 by 2208 pixels per eye. Of course, the experimental 120 FPS or refresh rate on the Quest 3 still being better. And although Apple hasn't officially announced their resolution with teardowns and stuff estimating it's about a 3660 by 3200, this would put the Samsung headset with an even sharper resolution than the Vision Pro. There's still a lot more to find out with specs, although this does supposedly use the same Snapdragon XR2 Plus Gen 2 chipset that the Quest 3 uses, meaning it probably wouldn't have nearly the capabilities the Vision Pro has with its M chipset. I'm excited to see another big name step back in though, especially as here in America, the Samsung versus Apple when it comes to phones is basically the two phones you can get here. Another bit of concerning news for the PSVR 2 crowd, this last week was reported that Sony has actually paused production as they have so much unsold inventory piling up on the PSVR 2. This coming after the news that Sony was testing potential PC or Steam game compatibility with the PSVR 2, also fueling the further rumors that maybe the PSVR 2 really isn't doing super well since launch. I feel like it has always been a tendency of the industry to compare the PSVR 2 numbers to other headsets, which really isn't the same. Anyone could go out and buy a Quest 2 or a Quest 3 right now and use it, but people who want to get a PlayStation VR 2 already have to own a PlayStation 5, so it's an extremely limited market by comparison. But now the fact that Sony is actually pausing its production themselves does sound like they are not hitting the targets they were expecting. Now keep in mind, these numbers are coming from a report that cites people familiar with the company's plans, but they're saying that Sony had produced well over 2 million units since launch, and then pausing production would mean that they haven't sold anywhere near that number. This makes sense with the other news that we've been reporting for you, because Sony did report initially that the PSVR 2 is outselling the PSVR 1, and yet we haven't heard anything since then, except for people gleaning through Amazon sales results showing that it looks like it's selling much, much slower than even the Quest 2 at this point. It's been a year since the PSVR 2 launched, and although we're not seeing a lot of great first-party exclusive titles, we are still seeing a lot of developer backing on the headset, with new games, big games, and still some exclusive games coming to it. But how many of you out there, if you don't have a PSVR 2, want to get one, and how many of you who have one are using it? Although it seems like as more people wonder, can the Apple Vision Pro be much of a gaming headset, it is actually getting exposure outside of gaming and helping remind people how virtual reality or mixed reality can do a lot more than just game. A team of surgeons actually was successfully able to use it to assist in a spinal surgery. The information was used to display vital information on virtual screens inside of it, and the headset even helped the nurse prepare for surgery, selecting the right instruments for the surgeon. The senior nurse, Suvi Nero, wore the headset during the surgery and later described it as a game changer changer, saying that it really eliminates the human error in guesswork. This isn't the first time we actually saw the Magic Leap 2 was fully approved to be used during surgeries even. So it's exciting for me to see this back in the news. I love gaming and virtual reality, but I've always said it's got a lot more uses that could change the world with. And it seems like maybe now that the name Apple is in the sphere, are we going to start seeing people actually using it again for other purposes and gaming taking less of the forefront? And although it's still only available in the US, there is signs that it may be preparing for its worldwide launch. 12 new languages are about to be added to the inside of the headset. You can see a list of them all here on the screen. And of course, this has to happen before they can start considering launching the Apple Vision Pro in other countries. And of course, as the real world uses for the Apple Vision Pro come out more and more, people keep wondering, how is the gaming experience like on it? Upload VR talked about this in a recent article saying that gaming with Apple Vision Pro is like playing in a strange new alternate universe. Whether you're playing a flat game out in the wilderness that the Apple Vision Pro is recreating for you on a giant screen, whether you just have games on the side while you're actually doing work to give you something to take a break with. Or if you're actually trying the few VR and AR titles, it does feel very different, especially because most of the time with VR headsets, you're used to controllers being the main way to game and hand tracking being more of a sideline to that. It's an interesting and very long read. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link with the others down below. But there's a lot happening in the news, a lot happening in the VR world, more excitement as new headsets and competitors are hopefully entering back into the space. It feels like things are kind of getting a breath of fresh air after years of really only talking about meta. But what does it feel like to you out there? I'd love to know in the comments and continue the conversation with you there, but thank you for being here with me and I'll see you in another reality.